Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the history and different versions of the BSA Meteor Air Rifle. Now I have previously made a video on the Mark IV Super Meteor and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Now this gun is pretty representative of a lot of the Meteor series so I'd recommend watching that video for detailed information about the merits of the gun and how it works. So things like accuracy, trigger pull and build quality. But I do also have two other Meteors. Um, now because of that video I've already made, I'm not actually going to make full videos on the other two guns as it's going to be largely covering the same kind of stuff. So what I thought I'd do today instead is make a more general video covering a bit of the history of the Meteor and comparing some of the different versions. Um, and I'd also do some shooting of the guns and try to show some period BSA literature and accessories. The first version of the Meteor, the Mark I, was released back in 1959, supposedly as a replacement for this gun, the BSA Cadet, which was discontinued in 1959, and we are currently in the eighth incarnation with the Meteor Evo. So whenever BSA made changes to the gun, they re-released it with a new Mark designation, or at least they did until recently, when they went from the Mark VII to the Evo rather than the Mark VIII. Now up until the Mark VI was released in 1993, when wholesale changes were made to the gun, um, the changes between the Marks I to V were relatively subtle, and it is those earlier Marks that this video is going to focus on, although I will come back to touch on the Mark VI onwards towards the end of the video. I have three rifles here, a Mark II that was made between 1962 and 1968, a Mark IV uh, made between 1973 and 1979, uh, that one's actually a Super Meteor, and a Mark V, which was made between 1979 and 1994. So whilst this isn't a complete representation of the earlier Meteors, as I don't have a Mark I or three, we can still get a good idea of the evolution of the rifle. Now as I say, this Mark IV here is a Super Meteor rather than the standard version, and it's that rifle that I previously made a full video on. Now I have here a BSA advert which does show the Meteor and the Super Meteor as separate models um, and they were marketed as such but despite some incorrect information in the Blue Book of Air Guns they are basically the same gun. Uh, the Super Meteor doesn't say Super anywhere on it, it's just a standard Meteor which has been dropped into a slightly upgraded stock. Uh, if you take a regular Meteor and a Super Meteor and remove the stocks, they're the exact same gun from the same production line in the same serial number range. Uh, nonetheless though, they're still an important part of the Meteor history, so it's good to have one of them to have a look at. And when I come to compare the stocks, I will point out the differences between them. And the Super version of the Meteor was available for Marks 3, 4 and 5. So let's just start off with a few basic stats. Uh, the Mark II is 41 inches or 104 centimeters long and weighs five pounds or just over two and a quarter kilograms. Uh, the standard Mark IV is 41 inches or 104 centimeters long, uh, but this one being the Super Meteor is 41 and a half inches or 105 and a half centimeters. And as far as I'm aware, both versions of the Mark IV weigh 5.8 pounds or 2.6 kilograms. Uh, and then the Mark V here is 41 inches or 104 centimetres long and weighs 5.4 pounds or 2.4 kilograms. So in terms of the substantive differences between them, let's start by looking at the markings. Starting with the top of the barrels, the Mark II says BSA Guns Limited England 2-2 and then has the BSA logo. Now the Marks 4 and 5 are almost identical to that, uh, the only difference being that the BSA logo and the calibre marking have been swapped around. Then moving on down the gun, the next thing you come to is the rear sight. The Mark II has a small BSA logo stamped into it, uh, whereas the Marks 4 and 5 don't have any markings on the rear sight. 
biggest difference with regard to markings is the main BSA Meteor marking on the top of the main cylinder. So on the Mark II here, uh, BSA is in this kind of arrowhead shape and then Meteor is written in a sort of italics. And that was the styling BSA we were using to market the rifle at the time, as you can see from this vintage magazine advert. Um, this is from an issue of Meccano magazine from 1963, so it's the Mark II pictured. By the Mark IV, they changed the style um, and put BSA Meteor in a much more basic block text, which I personally don't think looks half as good as on the Mark II. Uh, interestingly though, they also moved it back, so it now sits between the scope rail, which is an interesting choice as it means that it's completely covered when a scope is mounted. And then the Mark V has the exact same marking as the Mark IV. So the only other marking on the Meteors is the serial number, and it's in the same place on all of the guns, which is on the bottom of the block at the breech end of the barrel. Um, obviously each serial number is different and unique to each gun, but they do have uh, certain letter prefixes, which may seem like a very subtle thing to look at, but it actually tells you what mark it is, what calibre it's in, and the date range it was made in, which is very important information to help identify the gun as the mark isn't actually stated anywhere on it. Looking first at the Mark II, you can see this has a TB prefix, which shows it is a Mark II in 2.2, made between 1966 and 1968. Uh, others for the Mark II are TA, which is 2.2, made between 1962 and 1966, NA, which is 177 made between 1962 and 1966 and NB which is in 177 made between 1966 and 1968. The Mark IV here hopefully you can see has a TG prefix which shows that it's a Mark IV in 2.2 made between 1974 and 1978. Uh, the other prefix for Mark IV is NG which is 177, made between 1973 and 1979. And lastly, the Mark, 4, uh, Mark 5, sorry. This one has a TH prefix, which shows that it's a Mark 5 in 2.2, made between 1979 and 1994, um, with the other Mark 5 prefix being NH, which is 177, made between 1979 and 1994 and I will put a full list of serial number prefixes in the description below. Moving on to the physical differences, uh, let's have a look at the sights, and starting with the front one. The early Mark II has a very simple metal blade which is held in place by a dovetail, so it can be adjusted for windage by tapping it either way with a punch or something. Then by the time we get to the Mark IV, it has been upgraded, um, so it's now a plastic ramp with a metal blade which is pinned in place and then a metal sight hood to protect it over the top. And the Mark V sight is basically the same as the Mark IV except this one as you can see is missing the blade and protective hood. Now moving on to the rear sight and again going back to look at the Mark II first. It has a very basic rear sight although it is adjustable. It's essentially just a strip of steel uh, bent up at one end with a notch cut in it and an adjustment wheel to adjust the elevation uh, with the sight itself acting as a flat spring to keep tension and it's then held in place by a dovetail so that it can be adjusted for windage. The rear sight on the Mark IV is a much bulkier all plastic affair um, as a similar wheel for elevation adjustment except it's now part of an integral sight unit and this sight now has a much more precise side wheel for adjusting the windage. Uh, it's definitely no longer such a basic rear sight. Now the Mark V's rear sight on the face of it is very similar to that of the Mark IV, um, albeit this one is missing its elevation adjustment wheel. Uh, there are a few small differences though. Uh, the elevation method has gone back to using a metal flat spring in the top there, uh, which is reminiscent of the Mark II. Uh, it's almost like a hybrid of the Mark II and the Mark IV rear sights. And you can also, on the Mark V, make some fine small adjustments for elevation uh, by loosening the two screws on either side and raising or lowering this metal plate. And that plate can also actually be taken off and flipped over as it has a much bigger square cutout 
on the underneath. You'll also find though on the Mark V there are a couple of extra screw holes towards the end of the main cylinder which there aren't on the earlier Marks and the reason for that is so that you can move the rear sight to the back of the gun and then you can also change that small metal piece with the notch in it for another one with a small hole so that you can basically give the Meteor an aperture sight. Now turning to look at the barrels, uh, all three of the rifles have a rifled barrel and they're all in 2.2, although um, all versions of the Meteor are available in both 177 and 2.2 calibers. Now Marks 1 to 3 were available with either a rifled or smoothbore barrel, but the Mark 4 onwards was rifled only. So the Mark 2 has a 18 inch or 45 and 3 quarter centimetre barrel, and as you can see the muzzle has been backboard, but only very slightly. Now I know that's not backboard in the true sense of the term, but I don't know how else to describe it. Um, 18 inches was the standard barrel length on the Marks 1 to 4, but when we get to the Mark 4, the barrel has actually been extended to 18 and a half inches or 47 centimeters. But interestingly, it has now been backboard by about an inch. So in terms of the actual usable rifled portion of the barrel, um, it's not a lot different to the Mark II. Uh, if anything, it's probably slightly less than the earlier version. And then the Mark V barrel is the same dimensions and amount of back boring as on the Mark IV. Looking now at the stocks, the Mark II has quite a nimble streamlined stock. It's very slender with a nice taper up towards the forend, um, and that makes it a comparatively lightweight stock. Now, it doesn't have a butt pad, but it does have some serrations on the back to add grip when you shoulder the rifle, and on the underside it has a relatively standard length cutout in the stock for the cocking link. Um, and in terms of finish, it's quite a dark reddish colour. So moving on to the Mark IV, uh, the stock has lost the taper on the forend and it's much more squared off. Uh, which is a change introduced on the Mark III, and the stock is altogether much thicker. In fact, the Blue Book of Air Guns describes it as being more robust. Uh, it's a lot lighter in colour to the Mark II, and it has the same length cut out in the underneath. Um, as I said, though, this one is the Super Meteor, so the stock is made from a better quality wood, uh, this one being made of Scandinavian beech. And although the stock is more squared off on the Mark IV, it's even more so on the Super Meteor. It also has a couple of features that the standard Mark IV doesn't, which are the raised Monte Carlo cheek piece and a vented recoil pad at the back. Um, and lastly, the Mark V. The shape and styling have reverted back towards the Mark II slightly, but it has kept the thickness of the Mark IV. Uh, it's also similar in colour and finish to the Mark IV. And because the Mark V isn't a super meteor, the rear of the stock is more like the Mark II, as it doesn't have the raised cheek piece or butt pad. And the other change to the stock on the Mark V is it now has a much shorter cutout on the underneath, and that's as a result of changes to the cocking link. So I think next we should take the stocks off to have a look at that and the triggers. With the stocks off, you can see the cocking links or arms more clearly. Now the Mark II has a standard one piece link as does the Mark IV, but you can see that on the Mark V it changes to a two piece bar, um, which means it can then pivot at the join here, and because of that it means it doesn't need to push down through the cutout in the stock as far, so that cutout is a lot shorter than on the earlier versions. On the face of it the triggers look pretty much the same, but there are a few differences. The Mark II has a nicely shaped metal trigger blade and it is adjustable by this grub screw in the front of the trigger blade. The Mark IV trigger is visually very similar but the internal mechanism is slightly different. Now it's still a metal trigger blade at this point um, but it's a much more basic shape and it is still adjustable but the adjustment screw has been repositioned to above the trigger blade so it isn't in the way of your finger. The Mark V trigger is very similar to the Mark IV except it's a slightly different shape and the trigger blade is now made of plastic. <laughs> 
with the stocks back on, I'm now going to do a bit of shooting. Now I'm not actually going to compare the accuracy and power, as they should have been similar when they were new, and I can't really test the accuracy of the Mark V with the bits missing from the sights, and I don't know the condition of the springs and seals in each gun, so one of the guns might be in worse internal condition um, than the others, which would make it a meaningless test. So what I'm going to do instead is take a couple of shots with each gun and just give you some of my personal opinions on them and how they compare. And to do that I'm going to be using some period BX, uh, BSA accessories. I have here some pylon pellets and an old target holder complete with original targets. Okay, starting with the Mark II. Uh, the Mark II feels quite nice and light, it feels comfortable in the shoulder, you can move the rifle around. Uh, it's got not bad trigger at all actually, although I don't like the adjustment screw being on the trigger blade itself. That could be quite uncomfortable on your finger when you pull the trigger. It's got a nice, big, clear sight picture. The only, only problem with that on this gun is that the sights are quite small and having such a big sight picture doesn't make them feel particularly precise. But overall, it's a very pleasant gun to shoot. So, on to the Mark IV. The Mark IV is noticeably heavier than the Mark II, although some of that is down to this being the Super Meteor. Um, the raised cheek piece doesn't feel like it's raised high enough for it to make a lot of difference, but I do like the rubber butt pad. Um, the trigger is nowhere near as nice as the Mark II. It's a lot heavier trigger, even despite adjusting it, um, and it's not helped by the fact that it's no longer such a nice ergonomic shape of the trigger blade. Um, really, actually, the trigger on this gun is quite unpleasant, although I do like that they've move the adjustment screw out of the middle of the trigger blade. In terms of sights, uh, the sight picture isn't as big as on the Mark II, although the sights do feel more precise and they have far better adjustment capability. And lastly, the Mark V. Uh, in terms of weight, it feels like quite a nice balance between the Mark II and the Mark IV. Uh, the trigger is similar to the Mark IV, although it doesn't feel uh, quite as bad in this particular gun, but still nowhere near as the Mark, uh, nice as the Mark II. Um, and obviously in terms of sights, this one's got a few bits missing, so I can't really comment on them. So there you've seen the main differences between some of the earlier marks of BSA Meteor, and hopefully you've learned a bit about the history and evolution of the rifle. Now, despite this video focusing on the differences, uh, it is worth bearing in mind that in the over 30 years that the Marks 2 to 5 were produced, uh, the changes are actually relatively minimal. There is far more the same on these guns than there are differences, uh, both in terms of looks and operation. Things did change a lot more though in 1994 when the Mark 6 was introduced, which not only was it heavily upgraded, I'd say it was also heavily modernised. Uh, there was a lot more plastic used on the gun, which also involved replacing the distinctive shaped trig guard on the earlier marks. Uh, rubber butt pad became standard, manual safety was added, the power was increased and the barrel was reduced to 17.5 inches, although they did also make a 15 inch carbine version. So the Mark 6, 7 and Evo definitely feel like less of what I would call traditional plinking rifles, and therefore they have less of the Meteor heritage in order to compete in the modern market. Which I can understand, uh, but just not for me, and it's for that reason I have no interest in the Mark VI onwards. So I hope you found the video interesting, if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury, and until next time, keep your arms in the air.